Aloha, thanks for joining us today at Think Tech for Adventures in Small Business. I'm Jane Sawyer with the U.S. Small Business Administration. And we want to say happy Valentine's Day to everybody. I hope you're out there buying those chocolates, picking up those flowers, getting all those special gifts for somebody close to you, somebody you love at a small business, because we love small businesses. Um, we want to thank Think Tech for helping us with this broadcast. Um, this is a partnership with the organization as well as Hawaii Small Business Development Center Network, um, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veteran Business Outreach Center, all here in Hawaii, providing assistance and support to small businesses wherever you are, whatever stage your small business is in. I'm happy to have a special guest here today who uh, has been in business here in Hawaii for some time. Please help me welcome Scott Gardner, Scott Gardner and Company. Um, special topic here today yes. because one of the things, he's had a small business since 2004. Correct. And yeah. uh, very successful, fast growing, found a great niche in the mm. industry. But he also says that the heart of his business is service. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, yeah. hear a little bit about the business he's developed. Um, so, Scott, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Great to be here. All right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how you got started and what does Scott Gardner and Company do? Well, how I first got started was my, my older brother had introduced me to this line of work. Mm -hmm. Worked for him for about five years, learned the ropes, and then after five good years, then I separated and went on my own okay. and uh, started from there. And so what I do at Scott Gardner and Company, uh, we, do, we provide a unique service called Medicaid Financial Consulting. Mm -hmm. Sounds fancy, mm -hmm. but what Medicaid Financial Consulting simply means is we help patients, hospital patients, who are uninsured, we help them secure Medicaid benefits. So our staff, we provide a hand-holding service and we navigate these patients through the Medicaid application process from beginning to approval. Right, I've heard it's pretty daunting process yes. and probably, I mean, you might think you don't have a very big market, but I will, here in Hawaii, yes. where we have a high incident, high cost of living, yeah. high elderly population, yes. Yes. so, mm -hmm. and um, so, how did it, you know, maybe tell us a little bit more about what you do, what you actually do for clients. What does it entail to do Medicaid financial consulting? Okay. Uh, well, let me see where I am. In the hospital contracts that we service, there, there are a lot of people in Hawaii who are uninsured. So uninsured, uh, mm -hmm. mostly not too many jobs. So if you don't have a job, you probably don't have medical. Uh -huh. And then when you get ill, uh, if you need help, you would go to the emergency room. So the hospitals are faced with um, having to provide care uh, for these folks and they go uncompensated. So what we do is the hospital will identify those patients to us mm -hmm. and then we screen them. And if they appear eligible, then we'll get, navigate them through the Medicaid application process. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's, a, it's a variety of folks from, we help from newborns to pregnant moms, to young folks, uh, uh -huh. disabled folks, all the way to the elderly who need long-term care. Mm. So. Yeah, and that's becoming a much bigger need and yes. it's a big big expense yeah, yeah, correct, correct. for coverage or particularly just when you get into that situation mm -hmm. what are the eligibility requirements for medicare i mean for, for medicaid, uh, medicaid excuse me uh, for, so every state uh, the criteria is generally the same but uh, mm -hmm. whatever state you're in that's where you would apply mm -hmm. and um, well one you have to be a citizen okay. or naturalized or a permanent resident for five years so i have to pass a citizenship test mm -hmm. uh, you have to be a hawaii resident that's really easy to pass. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's financial tested. Uh, mm -hmm. Some programs are just income tested and some are both income and asset tested. Mm. So, okay. Yeah. So Pretty there tricky. is a lot of paperwork that needs to kind of come together. Yes, mm -hmm. correct, correct. Uh -huh. And your staff will help everybody compile it, submit their applications. Is it a long process? Yeah, the process could be long. If you don't, if you don't understand or know the process, uh -huh. it could take long. Uh, so we try to create efficiencies to um, what, uh, whatever the person's uh, situation is, mm -hmm. apply specifically for that particular program. Mm -hmm. So we, we um, make that part more efficient. Mm -hmm. so for quicker now, it's, do, how do clients find you? How do you market? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so the client is usually the hospital. So we would approach the hospital okay. administrations or the, the, the billing management office. And then through there is how we would uh, secure a contract with the facility. Mm -hmm. uh, to help all of their patients who are, are uninsured. Okay. Yeah. So you provide this, your 
you get a referral from the hospital that you have the contract with correct. to help them work with a, a client. Yes, correct. So, and you, so that would indicate to me that normally people are in kind of a stressful or a, a, mm. experiencing a health emergency or incident and realize that they need more help financially to right. yeah. to continue their treatment, to get their medication or to have nursing care. So it's it's important to be prepared yes. or it, when you know that this might be coming up. Right, or sometimes a lot, a lot of crisis moments, you know, mm -hmm. people just suddenly get ill, wind mm -hmm. up in the hospital and that's one of their biggest fears is financially, it's so expensive. Yes. And they're like, oh, how am I gonna pay for this? Or, or that's okay, I, I don't need this procedure or this procedure mm -hmm. because I, I, they can't pay for it. But when we come in and we screen and they appear promising to be qualified mm -hmm. and we're gonna navigate them through, it just it lifts, lifts such a big burden off of their shoulders oh, yes. and stresses. And uh -huh. so we like to feel that we're part of the, the healing process. And yes, the, I think you're part side. of the wellness <laughs> equation there, definitely, yeah, yeah. because that can be terribly, yeah. uh, um, stressful and that doesn't help you yeah. heal it doesn't yeah. help you go forward yeah. at all yeah. a typical um client once you get the paperwork submitted is it like a, a week a month um typically yeah or? depending on um uh, the type of application or program that we're going for some uh -huh. are quicker than others uh but usually like um the the, the biggest one is the long-term care medicaid application that's the most um scrutinized application mm -hmm. but our staff how we break them up in teams are that uh, um, uh, certain applications mm -hmm. should have a certain turnaround time okay and so our staff would follow up diligently mm -hmm. uh, you know go down to the, the Medicaid office and, and just follow up uh, do some friendly follow-ups mm -hmm. to push those applications through and to ultimately get you know everyone get the facility paid uh -huh. patient can get the, the coverage can get the follow-up medication so yeah because so. I don't think anybody even in that healthcare yeah. system or, or continuum want to deny a patient yeah. care yeah. necessarily or medication or yeah. therapy that they might need so right. your role becomes very very critical in that piece yeah and, and sometimes you know the 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 state who handles the Medicaid applications they're just overwhelmed there, there's so many people applying mm -hmm. and so few state workers so they're, they're just bombarded with applications. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to get the application correct mm -hmm. the first go around. Right. Yeah. So, and we, as we were talking, you mentioned yeah. that sometimes you pick up a client who has been denied, yes. but um, really needs some help. And you can yeah. work with that client to propose or create a remedy? C correct. That's correct. Uh -huh. yeah. So people will apply on their own, and uh, sometimes they'll get denied, and they just don't understand why they've got denied or where they went uh -huh. wrong. So we'll go in, we'll reassess, uh, take a look at what they've submitted, and then re-correct and resubmit the application. Mm -hmm. Or uh, a lot of times it takes an um, in-person intervention with the Medicaid worker and just uh -huh. re-explain, okay, this, this is how the application was meant to be or supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So just re-navigate it. So it sounds like you need to have a pretty good staff. Yeah. I mean, how many people have you got? Tell us, tell us a little yeah, about, we, we, about yeah. your organization and yeah. how you're... You find people and things like that. Yeah, so prior to uh, taking this business course, we had 18, mm -hmm. and then now we're up to 30. 30 full-timers. Uh, just because we've grown mm -hmm. uh, with our business plan, we've grown, and it just takes that much people to um, manage these the, the, the referrals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And we don't like to overwork our staff because mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that every application gets the, the right attention it, it deserves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, so I think... Um, Having, having that in many employees, and that means you, you mentioned this course, yes. uh, and you were part of the 2013 13. Yes. class. Yeah. So you've got six years outside of yeah. our Emerging Leaders course, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and so one of your goals, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about Emerging Leaders? You know? Um, uh, how they came to be? <laughs> yeah, do you know? Okay, so I, I got a call one day, and um, uh, I was being encouraged to take this course. Uh huh. And it said it was, you know, um, MBA level mm -hmm. learning. And, you know, it, it, it caught my attention, but I, at the same time, it made me nervous because I've been <laughs> out of school for a while and I was like, oh, you know, can, can I can I handle the course? Or, uh -huh. you know, you know, what if I if I can't do it? And I'll, I just didn't want to fail. Uh -huh. And so I was I was really uh, my, my wife and I talked about it quite a bit. And uh -huh. in the end, she said, you know, just go for it because where are you going to get this kind of information? Where are you going to mm -hmm. get this kind of learning? Uh -huh. Can't go back to school. You don't have the time to do that. Right. 
why not go for this course? And I'm so glad, I'm so glad mm -hmm. I did. And the incredible thing about SBA's Emerging Leaders course yeah. is it's free. Free, yeah. It's free. Yeah. We don't pay for the curriculum, we pay for the curriculum yeah. because the companies that we bring in, yeah. we really believe, well, we kind of grind you a little <laughs> bit during that application process. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. No, but uh, just so you folks who may not have heard yeah. about um, SBA's Emerging Leaders, it is uh, a specialized curriculum that SBA brought in, and we have it in over 40 districts across the country. Hawaii's had this program about nine years. Mm -hmm. We've graduated 100 entrepreneurs like Scott from this class, a little over 100, but they've come into class um, having at least three years in business, it's not for the faint of heart, mm. it's not for beginners, but it's really designed to help small businesses who have employees um, kind of get their business to the next level, gain a little more sophisticated understanding and knowledge of um, using you know, fact-based decision-making in moving their business for forward, uh, understanding their financials, making contacts, net networking with peers just like them who are facing some of the same issues. It goes over six to seven months mm -hmm. um, every two weeks at the SBA office and we've had um, business owners, entrepreneurs, CEOs from the neighbor islands who fly in every two weeks. The, cat, the class is very interactive. We bring in local experts but uh, I'm glad to hear mm -hmm. it was a good experience for you oh, yes. because it's, it's work. It's, yeah. It takes a lot yeah. and uh, does require some discipline, though it may not be cracking the books like you might have done <laughs> in college or, or whatever. But uh, yeah, so what did you find were some of the best benefits of the class? The best benefits? I like the, well, the, the whole course, the whole syllabus. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I really like uh, learning more about the financials, mm -hmm. how to read the financial statements. Uh, seeing the percentages, uh, you know, what, how much money is spent on this, this area, this area, and so just breaking it down, mm -hmm. that that really spoke loud to me, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed uh, networking with the other students and the other business owners, uh, like-minded, uh -huh. and just learning, just picking up here and there from each one, and it was great. And uh, um, I've actually uh, made some connections with uh, some of the classmates. One guy. Uh, was a computer design programmer uh -huh. helped me build my system so I can okay. have an excellent uh, account system right now customized mm -hmm. account system mm -hmm. yeah. works really well for you yeah. you can me. do reports uh, whatever you want Scott Gardner company state of the art huh? yes. Yeah, with yes. this. Yeah. yeah and so stuff with that uh, it, it has elevated me uh -huh. to the next level and uh, all the learning it, it has is tremendous yeah. and 30 employees now that's yeah. that's uh, quite an accomplishment yeah. when you need employees who have some of those analytical skills, organizational yeah. skills, and yeah. we're hearing how hard it is to find good employees yeah. now in Hawaii yeah. since unemployment is yeah. now so low. Yeah. So you, mean, yes. yeah. you get a lot of referrals, or where, what, do you, what do you have that you could capture another 10, 12 quality employees? Where'd you yeah. find them, Scott? Yeah, we were so blessed. Uh, all of our staff is just amazing, but it's usually by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's a friend, you know, referring a friend or, or someone that they know uh -huh. that would uh, fit in with the company. They got to have the chemistry. We can teach you everything about what you need to know, but uh -huh. you got to have, you got to be loving, you got to be fun, and you got to be just truly sincere, compassionate about helping mm -hmm. others. Yeah. Yeah. So those are traits you look for when you're hiring somebody. Yes. How do you even cultivate and make sure that people are motivated to continue with that kind of service? Yeah. Uh, it, it'll show. It'll mm -hmm. show. Yeah. If 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 uh, if it's almost like social work, you know, uh -huh. you got to just have that certain kind of heart to do. Not everyone is cut out for it. Okay. So you got to have that, that that spirit in you, to to wanting to help. So folks. heart makes a lot of difference. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. You know? yeah. And how important that is to talk about a little bit today. Yeah. We're going to go to break, but stick with us, and we'll come back and talk a little bit more about Scott Gardner and company, how they're growing, and how emerging leaders with SBA had an impact on that. Stay with us. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. 
Mabuhay and Aloha. Hey, Aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha, welcome back. We're here with Scott Gardner today um, talking about his adventure in entrepreneurship, his adventure in small business. I'm Jane Sawyer with the Small Business Administration. So we're just talking about the big growth that you've experienced yes. over the last five or six years, yes. expanding your customers, or one kind of customer yeah. that you have is primarily the hospitals yes. who have a really urgent need to mm -hmm. have people know where to get the money to pay their bills, coordinate with insurance companies, coordinate with Medicare. Yes. And there are a lot of people who need that help, even right. as they get older, mm -hmm. go on fixed incomes, yes. or live longer, mm -hmm. and incomes don't last anymore. Right. So that is you know, a bit of a feeder for you. But you also have people who you know, find themselves so you know, not necessarily hospitalized, but perhaps a chronic condition means mm -hmm. they need expensive treatment. Yes. So those people can find you. Yes, correct, and, correct. And you do service them, not just through hospital contracts. Yes, correct. So we have a separate division and it's primarily for long-term care Medicaid. So the aging population in Hawaii is exploding as we speak. Mm -hmm. People living longer, uh, the baby boomers are adding to that population. They have a nickname for it. It's, <laughs> it's called the Silver Tsunami. Silver Tsunami, yeah, okay. So, uh, huge aging population, not enough care facilities, uh, long-term care is so expensive, uh, mm -hmm. people could outlive their money. So they need Medicaid mm -hmm. to pay for their long-term care. So, yes. so uh, folks would engage our services on, a, on that level to mm -hmm. navigate them through because mm -hmm. that's the most scrutinized application. Mm, uh, okay, when you're, when you're older but the, don't have that uh, incident of a hospitalization yes. or something like that. Correct, correct. So, yeah. okay. Um, so they would go to your website or they pick up a brochure somewhere, their doctor's office? Yeah, or? some people find us online at uh, scottgardnerco.com mm -hmm. online or via their attorney. A lot mm -hmm. of them have estate planning attorneys and uh, so they would need help navigating the ap application mm -hmm. so they get recommended to us. Or just word of mouth at the, the care facilities. Okay, yeah. so word of mouth at care facilities, attorneys, um, long-term care providers and things yes. like that Correct. okay yeah. you know and it's a great website you know mm -hmm. it tells a lot of interesting things about how you work with clients yeah. and because it is kind of a little bit of a scary area they're yes. kind of laying their life bare to you in so many ways here's my right. home here's what i've got here are my assets yes because all of that is evaluated correct, right? correct. it does get personal and sensitive so we, mm -hmm. we try to um, Handle it very delicately, mm -hmm. and um, but uh, but yeah, that's what Medicaid wants. Whatever mm -hmm. they want, we have to show proof. So, right, and yeah. and and it is a big, you know, healthcare costs are, you know, hard to control and manage. So it's an important important area Correct. for people. Yeah. I saw you had a lot of testimonials. Maybe you could tell us maybe a story, um, respecting confidentiality. Sure. Of course, yeah. that's got to be an important yeah. thing. Um, but just some of the types of client cases that you've had that have perhaps touched you or mm -hmm. you've made a tremendous difference in an individual's life or their family's life. Mm -hmm. who, I mean, I know of people who have, you know, yeah. been, uh, we're going to have to sell all our assets or give up our homes or um, my brother's going to have to move back in with me again. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> you know, things like that. No, but maybe you could share yeah you know some of that. there's a lot of myths out there so mm -hmm. sometimes people think uh, you you're not allowed to have a home mm -hmm. that that'll just disqualify you from the get go but that's not true uh -huh. and so when we share the good news like that they they they're just so elated about that mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people apply on their own and they 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 struggle and they sometimes it takes them like six months a year just trying to do it on their own mm -hmm. and they fall through the crack or something and so they come to see us and they say oh man i should have just i wish come to you earlier mm -hmm. and uh, we navigate them and one person said uh thank you so much for navigating me through the minefield minefield yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that one sticks out uh -huh. uh, but yeah it's, it's a it's a 
tricky process. Mm -hmm. Tricky, tricky process. And and there are some people who hear those kind of old myths or old wives' tales or anything like that about that application process mm -hmm. and start getting rid of their assets or giving yeah. things away, only to find that it's they're going to be disqualified because there's a significant look back period right, right. yeah be, uh, the look back used to be three years but now it's been extended to five mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, sometimes people they give away uh, uh, inappropriately mm -hmm. uh, according to Medicaid rules and so that would backfire on their application mm -hmm. so we have to uh, meet with them huddle maybe mm -hmm. return some of the money or um, mm -hmm. uh, figure out a way to get the person approved. Do you work with individuals or families or does everybody, you know, who gets involved in the process once you get a referral from a hospital or an organization? Yeah, so normally uh, the, the patient themselves or their uh, spouse or the immediate children, that, that's who we normally work with. Mm -hmm. um, and on the bigger scale for long-term care, we like to have all the family, as many, as many relatives uh -huh. that, that are interested uh, to come in. So, because there's so many questions so they can all ask their questions and they can all, everything's laid on the table, mm -hmm. everything's consistent. Yeah, this, that planning piece with family mm -hmm. can be another minefield. Oh, yeah. It's oh, definitely yeah. a minefield and it's very mm -hmm. loaded emotionally too oh, yeah. because we're looking at lifespan and inheritance and assets and treatments yeah. that some people want or don't yeah. want or end of life concerns as well, which, you know, are hard to face. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to all this paperwork yeah. since I get to do my, I keep getting mail about my Medicare now. This yeah. is just, yeah. uh, it's, so it makes it right in your face that uh, yeah. you have to start, you know, a little advanced planning and, and yes. knowledge. So I would even recommend to people to, who you have questions about this for loved ones or families to check out, you know, your, your website yeah. because there are stories and process information and things mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. people could just Google you, Scott Gardner and Company Hawaii, yes. and find the right Scott Gardner. Correct, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's but right. you'll find out once you look at the website, too. Yeah. Find out about the attitude of be doing business mm -hmm. and your commitment to service mm -hmm. and the values in your company yeah. maybe you can because it is such a sensitive area that has to be important yes. throughout your company as well correct mm -hmm. correct, correct yeah yeah we we're talking about the website about the uh, tagline that service is the heart of our business mm -hmm. and, and that, that's true that's so mm -hmm. true we, we hold that uh, with high regards because we have to service the island is small uh-huh yeah. and uh, but if you give good service it'll come back right Right. Yeah. I think that's one of those important lessons, you know, and um, to really make note of that as we try and wrap up here, yeah. you know, we're, yeah. um, so, you know, I'm, I really appreciate and congratulate you on all the Thank progress you. you've made yeah. in growing yeah. this company and yeah. providing such an important service yeah. here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, it influences a whole industry mm -hmm. and um, quality of life for yeah. so many, many people. And I'm really pleased that uh, SBA has had a little bit to do with your growth in getting you through Emerging Leaders yeah. class yeah. Uh, and providing you the kind of compelling uh, process and the information mm -hmm. to really help you take your business to the yeah. next level because you're obviously on the way there. Yeah. And that's a great thing to know. So application process is not that daunting. We have a one page yeah. expression of interest and we do kind of push you to tell us what your goals are too, yeah. where you want to be in the next three years. Correct. Because yeah. emerging leaders, you develop, there's a work that goes in there to yeah. develop your vision and a three year plan um, on things you want to accomplish. So the application is one page. People can get it from our office. Um, applications are due March 9th, so you have a couple of weeks to check it out, get together, go to um, sba.gov backslash HI for Hawaii. You can find out the information there or call our office at 808-541-2990 to get the inside scoop on how you may be eligible for this class. Um, as I said, it's not for the weak of heart. It's not for a beginning business. It's for experienced small business CEOs. Do you need to get into the class? Um, you do need to, oh, annual revenues, 200, at least 250000 at least one employee other than yourself. Um, and again, be able to articulate your goals, be willing to dig in and uh, come on down to the office every other Wednesday evening for a couple of hours. Uh, then there's some meetings with your peers, but it's a great experience. Excellent experience. You know, Excellent. oops, and I'm losing my earpiece, so 
um, you folks may be stuck with us a little longer than you think. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see. Yes, so SBA's Emerging Leaders class coming to you starting in mid-April. Um, we're looking for 15 students. This is a $10,000 uh, value uh, that goes to you free. I guess it takes a little investment of your time, a little bit of sweat equity, yeah. and uh, maybe parking. Parking. <laughs> parking fees. Driving into to Honolulu for the class. So um, let's see. Uh, I think we're we're almost ready to wrap up, but I have yeah. lost mission control. Okay. <laughs> So uh, anyway, um, also remember it's, it's uh, Valentine's Day. If you're going to get out there and do some shopping, shop small. Look at our, check out our website uh, at shopsmall.com and uh, our call, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership. There are some great courses coming up that will help you with your marketing activity. So um, I'm sorry, we're, we're off. Okay. Happy Valentine's Day. Love it.